Did you see the J on it? Like a drug charge. Yeah. But he got reduced to probation. Isn't he already? Wasn't he already sentenced? I don't know. Oh, this is gay for Trey. Yeah. He once talked about making a skit that was like that had to do with like buying a tray pillow and like getting caught with like a hole cut in the tray pillow, like the mouth of the tray of the tray pillow. <laughs> uh, I got a joke for everybody. What's that? The white sock in bird poop. I don't know. It's, it's still bird poop. <laughs> uh, uh, uh. <laughs> I actually have heard that one before, but it was slightly different. Cool. Better. You didn't get that out of the Vonnegut book, did you? Yeah, actually. Really? I, 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 can blame it on I read that. that. I don't remember that. Oh, well, I wanted to read like a, a page and a half to everybody because I think it's really fun. Um, cool. Read it, Jess. I read it to you, so uh, sorry. Breakfast of Champions is hilarious. Yeah, I haven't read that. I've read some of those books, but yeah, not some of the best. Here is a lesson in creative writing. First rule do not use semicolons. They are, transvestite, they are transvestite hermaphrodites, representing absolutely nothing. All they do is show you've been to college. And I realize some of you may be having trouble deciding whether or not I'm kidding. So from now on, I will tell you when I'm kidding. For instance, join the National Guard of the Marines and teach democracy. I'm kidding. <laughs> we are about to be attacked by Al-Qaeda. Wave flags if you have them. That always seems to scare them away. I'm kidding. If you, really, if you want to really hurt your parents, and you don't have the nerve to be gay... At least, the least you can do is go into the arts. I'm not kidding. The arts are not a way to make a living. They are a very human way of making life more bearable. Practicing an art, no matter how well or badly, is a way to make your soul grow, for heaven's sake. Sing in the shower, dance to the radio, tell stories, write a poem to a friend, even a lousy poem. Do it as well as you possibly can. You will get an enormous reward. You will have created something. I thought that was really cool. There's a lot of really cool That is really cool. fucking cool. Yeah. That's yeah. really cool. Oh, yeah, see if Bonnie gets right out there. Yeah, he's great. That kind of like made, well that made me think of like just how great it was the couple times when like I've been involved in getting people together and everybody shares something. It was like, that's really cool. And that like, so that stuck out for me. I got one. Alright, this is Here we go. a crazy dream. Alright, so this is 2012. The Return of Quetzalcoatl by Daniel Pinchback. This book is crazy. You should read it. It sounds crazy. And this is a dream that he has. One night, after a long day of art going under the pouring rain in the castle, I had a vivid dream about the visitors. In the dream, I went with two friends to meet one of the gray alien commanders in an upper west side lobby. The alien resembled a Chinese woman. She wore a red silk dress, had large almond-shaped eyes, and four fingers on each hand. She spoke as if we were going to make some kind of deal. <sighs> Sorry. It's going to be great for you when we take over your planet, she told me. We can't wait to help you. We want to show you all around the galaxy. She called for her assistants. They were hunchbacks with bulbous features resembling medieval trolls. They put my two friends on their backs and gave them piggyback rides. The alien commander pointed upward, where cheap tinsel stars and planets were stuck on the lobby's dome ceiling. She acted as if they were... These were, an impressive, these were an impressive sight. My friends did seem impressed. I was disappointed. Was this all they had to show us? Confused, I left the lobby and went alone to a crowded, seedy nightclub where a long-haired weirdo came up to me with his girlfriend. They were hybrid human aliens. The man laughed and put one of his four fingers deep into my mouth. Immediately in the dream, I turned around and put my finger just as far into his girlfriend's mouth. Then we all laughed about this almost obscene exchange. <laughs> I awoke from the dream and recalled the details before reaching for my notebook. Over the last years, while exploring shamanism, I developed disciplined habits of dream recollection. Wide awake, I reflect on the dream's particular seamy, swampy ambience. Before I started to write it, write it down, my partner, in deep sleep, suddenly sat up and leaned toward me. She opened my mouth with one hand, she brought her other hand to my face and put one of her fingers in my mouth. <laughs> Startled, I woke her immediately, but she remembered nothing of it or what she had been dreaming. Later, I learned that the area around Castle, an ancient area similar in some ways to the stone circle studded landscape of Wessex in England, is the center of German crop circle activity. Several new formations appeared in local fields on the weekend that we were there. 
The doors of the chapel perilous swung open and welcomed me inside. So I'm just doing it. They exist, man. That's, That's crazy, crazy, dude. Uh, Take a road trip to Roswell, dude. Get <laughs> <laughs> down the barrier. Get into it. You you for real. Wow. Yeah.